Hallelujah. Uh, we are going to sing um, one song that we used to sing. We are little who said, If you are happy and you know, say amen. 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 If you are happy and you know, say amen. Amen. All right, let's leave the rest. We finish it the rest when the message is through. Because after the message, I will come back to sing it. If we can still say amen, that means we understood the message. Uh, we know that, yes, we really understand it. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for what you have done. And we thank you for what you are still going to do. We thank you because you are not man, you are God. And we thank you because you are a powerful God. We thank you because your law has not changed. And we thank you because forever and ever you are still God. We say, Father, glory be to your name in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray. As we are going to continue with your word, as we are going to open our eyes, Lord, we pray. The Father, help us to understand the word and remain in the word and to obey you fully in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Don't allow Amen. us to be deceived by the things of the word. Don't allow us to be deceived and be cast to bottomless pit in the last day in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, in anywhere that the things of the word have grip us, we pray that, Lord, you help us to escape in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the day of rapture, may we be found worthy to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, we pray that most of our brothers and sisters that are on their way, that God Almighty bring them fast so that they can be. Uh, you know, this message can also benefit them because today we are going to be looking today. We are not going into anything that we want to go into our life, into our mode, into things that we, you know, we come across daily on daily basis. So therefore, uh, yes, of course, I have shared it also on Facebook. You too can share your own as well. So I want you also to get your pen and paper, invite people who don't believe in that before. And that is why you need to get your Bible and paper, you know, so that you can write it down. Because it will be useful for you whenever you are preaching outside and somebody confronts you. It will be easy to go back to this teaching and then bring it and say, so, of course, it is in the Bible. It is here. And Bible says like this, God doesn't like it. So that is why you are to you are to hold, get a paper and pen. And then please, if you know that your phone will distract you, please can they put it in silence mm, as we move on to get the truth. God bless you as you prepare. God bless you. God bless you. So please, in case I say anything you don't understand, please ask me questions. I will be allowing question. Uh, yes, I will allow question. Though uh, when it is at the end, I'm sorry. This topic is going to take up to two hours. I don't know yet. Though we cannot finish it, this topic is just like the topic of um, rapture, which is very large. Uh, I remember at the beginning of this year, the Lord asked me to teach about rapture, which I've never even finished it. And I'm not sure if I can finish it. So the same thing with this one. Before I will tell you, before I will go to the teaching, let me quickly tell you a little story about, I mean, of course, I've heard about, um, about uh, the Christ Apostolic Church. I mean, if you know the man they call Baba Lola, of CAC, Ayodele Baba Lola, can you know if you have a God bless you, sister lover? Yes, who else again I've heard about him? Yes, how God use him mightily. If you have seen him, can you wave your hand on the screen? Or if you have heard about him, can you just say, I have heard about him. God bless you, sister Grace. Sister Grace, God bless you. Okay, two people have only heard about him. Okay, okay, I can see sister Odin have heard about him too. Uh, are your daily Baba Lola of CAC, uh, Christ Apostolic Church? Okay, I have two. Yes, Sister Sufficient, God bless you. 
In case if you have heard about him, you can type it as well. God bless you if you can type it. I have heard about him. Oh, yes. Please let's share this video and invite others so that others to come. I want to use this opportunity to say hello to everyone on Facebook. God bless you mightily as you are listening. That eyes you are using to look, that ear you are using to listen to us will not be affected by sickness or any infection in the mighty name of Jesus. And as yeah. many that we share this video, as you are watching and you are going to click share, God will remember you and your request this month before the end of this program in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Amen. I can see uh, other people also have said, I have heard about him, Sister Bridget Abel. Thank you. Okay, I've heard about him. God bless you. Now, let me remind us, let me tell you some little story about Babalola. Before Babalola died, something happened. The Lord talked to him. He said, teach my people how to be natural. Teach them that I want them to be as they were. God bless you, evangelist. Evangelist, God bless you. I said, teach my people about um, natural, how to be natural, natural like honey. Hallelujah. Teach my people how to be natural. And the man of God taught this lesson in his church. And that year, that year, all over the church in Nigeria at that time, only 15 people in his church obeyed that statement, obeyed that teaching, and 15 of them died that year. Uh, this was recorded in ever first time in history. 15 souls made heaven. They are already holy, but they remove everything attached. Earring, no powder, just like as they are, natural, complete 100% natural. But unfortunately, they died that year. 15 of them died that year. And then when they died, it was recorded that 15 of them made heaven by the annual convention of the evil doers in hell. They gave that account. Uh, Babalola broke a seal. He broke number of people that made hell. And that was where the history of Babalola was traced out in the kingdom of darkness. That who taught, who brought this teaching that made people to, to believe such teaching that exposed the that exposed the plan and purpose of kingdom of darkness against Christians. So it was recorded then. And uh, thank God that teaching did not stop there. Many people, many people, many people try. You know, many people begin to do it. Today we have Deeper Life, who also believe in such teaching. Today we have CSC as well. Um, although most of the CSC have derailed, Yes. Yeah. Even today, satanic church may no longer wear earrings, but the truth is this, that in the past, it was for the holy people. Holy people. And that is why you can see, that is for Babalola for you at that time. At that time. Today's topic is titled, Worldly Adornments. Worldly Adornments. Worldly Adornments. Worldly adornment. That is worldly adornment. W O R L D L Y. That is worldly adornment. A D O R N M E N T. Adornment. Adornment. A D O R N M E N T. Adornment. Adornment. A D O R N M. E N T adornment. So join it together, become worldly adornment. That is the topic. Under this topic, worldly adornment, we are going to look into some things. We will really do much reading, much in the Bible, so that we know where we are going, so that we know. Thank God we have come. Thank God you and I, we are on Zoom now. Thank God most of us now, we have agreed to meet physically. Thank God that very soon we begin to meet one-on-one. -on -one. God bless you, 
Yes, God bless you. Worldly adornment. God bless you, Daddy. God bless you. Worldly adornment. This is now. We are going to look into the world. Ah, thank God you are here. So you will not be here and let her end up in hell. After you have heard all the message, after you have received all the prophetic word, after your enemy has been exposed here by this ministry, and now you are free from all the enemies and all your problems, and at last there was a chain on your neck that dragged you to hell. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There is solution. And that solution is what we are going to look at today. Please, I hope we are not, we are not in a hurry. Because if you are in a hurry to get the truth, you have you will be so patient to get it in hell. <laughs> and it, it will be so terrible and difficult because in hell you have all the time to listen. But you know, no truth again, no repentance here, there. And I pray you and I will not be a partaker in that place in the mighty name of Jesus. Um, let us God bless that, my baby dear. God bless you. Um <laughs> Now, let us see. The things that people of the world is using on their body, that is what I mean. You know, when you look at that adornment, it's described, he it said, things used to, he said, things to decorate, things used for decoration. So, what the world used to decorate themselves. You know, if you are looking for a job today, you decorate yourself. How do I mean by that? You package. You package yourself. Imagine, you are looking for a job you are looking for a job and you put on suit and tie and new shoe. It shows that you have money. Why are you looking for a job? But because you want to look good, you package yourself like carton. You package yourself very well. You want to look good. You want to look enticing so that they will give you the job. Even though when you collect the job, you don't have transport, but you package yourself. It is packaging, they call it. Now, let us come out from that one. Let us now enter. Let's, I will not be calling point, but I'll be taking it number one. Number one said creation of gold and it is used. Creation of gold. The creation of gold. The creation of gold. I will take it step by step. Creation of gold. Yes, creation of gold. You know, we must know what gold is used for. We must know why God created it. We must know why God created gold for how many of us have, have a revelation of heaven? God bless you. No, you have heard about it. You have heard about testimonies about people. Can you shout hallelujah? You have heard about people go to heaven. Oh, I was in heaven. Oh, I was in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. 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 That is it. Now, we have just take a look at it. People that have this revelation, they told us how beautiful heaven is. Oh, my God. Heaven is beautiful. He's made of gold and silver, Abby. Is there is there Dangote cement in heaven? Is there uh, uh, this uh, people um, Julius Bega cement in heaven? No, I've never seen any bridge or anybody that go to heaven and he come back and say, "Oh, I saw Julius Bega handwork in heaven. It was powerful." No. Oh, I saw the Dangote cement. They use it there in heaven. It is powerful. No, I don't know the one used in Europe. No one ever said that. Why? Because everything over there is used as what? It's used as gold. They are made of silver. They are made of gold. They are made of precious stones. That is what they are used for. They are, that, that's what it's used to build. Now, the creation of gold. I will start from there. Creation of gold. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 2. I want fast reader. People that can be as fast as anything. So that we can cover up on time. Creation of gold and it is used. Creation of gold and it is used. Let us go to the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. If you are there, you can read. If you are not there, uh, where anybody that first get there can be read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2. From verse 11 to 12. Yes. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. The name of the first is Pinson. That is it which compa which which compassed which compassed the whole land of Havila. Which I'm sorry. The name of the first is Pinson. That is it which compassed the whole land of Havila. 
I... where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is bedlium and the oxy stone. stone. God bless Amen. you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at it there. Look at what he said. He said, the name of the first is Pizan, that is which is compassed the whole land of Havala, and where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. There is Bedlam and the oxen stone. What do you mean of that? It simply means after the creation of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, come, let us create man in our own image. After the creation, now God desired that man live forever on earth. And now for man to live forever on earth, man will need to have everlasting house. Man don't need to only be in the garden. Man will need to build. So God takes the picture of what is in heaven. Heaven is made of gold, the street of gold, the street of diamond. So God now creates the gold and puts it on the surface of the earth. Now Adam and Eve is to use this gold to build the good then is to build, to build house, to mold it like when we do blow. They will have it. That is that house will never crack. Neither will it get old. But they will be shining it. They will shine it. Whenever it gets uh, dust, they will shine it. It will be shining. It will be like heaven. It will be like heaven. Everything will be good. Because that is how heaven is. Heaven is made of gold. So this gold was created for man for building. For decoration, to build altar for God, to make things beautiful, not to put on the body. Hey, not to put on the body. And now something happened. God wants man to live forever, as I've said before, on the earth. That is only that is why He created gold for man to use it for building. So it will last long. Never will it break, rust, or spoil, even as most things in heaven are made of gold and precious stones. Even Satan himself, which is called himself the greatest work of God, was created by... You see, let me remind you today. Satan, I mean, of course, I've heard about Satan before. Uh, if you have never heard about Satan, uh, that means you are not a Christian. Praise the Lord. If you have never heard about Satan, that means you are not a Christian. Uh, what, why do I say that? That means you don't have battle. You don't have oh. battle. No battle in your life. Because if you, if you have heard about Satan, ordinarily by hearing the name, you have a battle. Yes, you have a battle. Now, just take a look at it. Satan, you know, he boosted, he boosted. He said, I am God's greatest work. I will be like the Mosa. Something happened. Even Satan himself was created with gold. Hallelujah. God created Satan. Look at it. Anything that God wanted to last, he will create it with gold and silver. Though we, we are made in the God's image, we are to last more than that. And look at what he said. Look at what it says. He creates Satan through gold and silver, precious stones. How many of us have heard about it before? I, I think I've told all of us here before. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, if you are there, you can quickly read verse 13 to 14. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28, if you are there, you can shout hallelujah. Ezekiel 28. Hallelujah. Yes, if you are there, you can you read Ezekiel chapter 28. Oh, yes, Ezekiel 28. Verse 1. Ezekiel 28. Let's read verse 13 and 14. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Should I have been in Eden, the garden of God, every precious stone was, the, was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onox, <laughs> onox the, um, the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald and the carbon coal, the gold, the work, the workmanship of the tablets and of the pipes were prepared in thee in the day Adar was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that cover it, and have set thee so, Adar upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked upon the up, walked up and down in the midst of the stone of fire. Can you see that? Look at what he said in verse 15. He said, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee, to the proud grew in him. That was Satan. Look at it. They created him with ten stones. You know, I've become so proud. I'm God's greatest work. He wants to be like God. He forgets his maker. 
Now, what am I trying to say that? I'm trying to tell you the origin of God, how God started, how what is used for. God used it, you know, to make some things, and the angels were made by fire with fire. That's why I say, who make it is angels, ministers of fires. Hallelujah. And now just take a look at that. After the fall of man, God caused X. God caused everything. Both and you know, both in and on earth, everything was caused. Both man himself is caused. I pity a man when a man has a problem, he carries himself to herbalist. Number one, you yourself, you are cost number one. The herbalist is cost number two. You know, you go and meet the herbalist. Herbalists now do concussion and gather like 10 things and do it together. That is cost 10 plus you making cost 12. Now you go there being cost one only, coming back home with cost 10 of 20. Can you see now? The costs have increased. I know family battery is there, great grandfather battery is there. Now you join everything together. Tell me why you will survive. You know, your matter is just like somebody who jumped from, from pan to fire. Only God can save you. Now, take a look at that. God caused man after the fall of man. God caused man after the fall of man. What is the meaning of that? God caused man. He caused the earth. He caused everything. He caused the good. He, out of anger, he forgot that, there are, that what man we used to build is, in, is on earth. He's, he has provided. He forgot and he caused everything out of anger because they oh, disobeyed him. Let's see Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. 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 The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Let us go there. If you are there in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, can we see? If you are there, you can read. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And unto Adam, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cause is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow, God bless you. Let me be there. Cause is the ground for thy. You see, look what he said. Cause is the ground for thy sake. Ah, when God speak, nothing can change it except he Himself want to change it. <laughs> Cause be the ground for thy sake. Let me tell you. Even Adam himself never knew that he was taken from the ground. No, 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 no. It was here he find out. Yes, because he later told him that, yeah, this is where you will go. He said, you will return. Look at verse 19. He said, in the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till, the, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken. Ah, you see, Adam opened his mouth. So I'm taking from ground. I don't know. See, he caused the ground. So man is automatically on that course. God is automatically on that course. Everything precious stone that God has put on earth for building for man is automatically on that course. Now, man being cost number one, hey, not only that God caused it, God caused the God that is number one. He now decided to go further, to take it away. Because God talked about redemption. Look at what he said. He said in verse 15 of that chapter 3, verse 15, he said, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. Thou shalt bruise his head, and thou shalt, he said, he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Why do you know that? God also talked about the Virgin Mary, to bring redemption in the future. But look at what happened. Let me bring that to you. He talked about bringing redemption in the future. He now said, ah, okay, if I cause man, I've made redemption, but let me take away the gold from them. Man is more important to me than the gold. Man is more important to me than the things on earth. So I will make, I will make provision for redemption for man. But God never make provision for redemption for gold and silver. So he decided. He decided. Look at what he said. The gold and all the precious stones went down into the earth just to make sure that man find it hard to get and God said he will give it to the strangers of the earth. What's the meaning of that? 
after God cursed man, after God cursed gold, he said, I'm going to give the gold to the strangers of the earth. My people, who are the strangers of the earth? We need to know that. Let's go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. Let's go there. Ezekiel chapter 7. Yes, Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 20. No, let, 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 let's see. Let us get chapter 7, verse 21. He said, And I will give it to the hands of the strangers for a spirit, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and, and they shall pollute it. But before we do that, look at what he said in verse 20. He said, As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the image of their abominable and of their detectable things therein. Therefore, have I set it far from them. God said, I set the things far from them. I set the gold far from man. I set it far from people to use it. I push it under the earth instead of leaving it on the surface of the earth. God decided to push it in. And after God has set it down, down the earth, that is why today, how many of us have seen gold on the surface of the earth? Praise the Lord. Please, if anybody is to get gold today, what are you to do? Can anybody answer me? If we are to get gold, what will we do? You have to dig. You have to dig. We will dig. In fact, for you to even get it, do you know that if you are digging gold, we are made to understand that you normally move. Am I right? Feel it. Yes. So therefore, why does it move? Because when it was given to the strangers of the earth, they pollute it. They take it inside the ground because God has given it to them. Then the Satan and his angel, before you can identify where gold is, you see those with that mild gold, they do some sacrifice to make the gold remain in a place for them to get it. If you don't know, whenever you see them, go and check them. They do some sacrifice to mine to tie the gold down. They have to appease the demons in charge. Because they know the law. Oh, they say, Oh, we know that this has been given to you. Give up. Can you all hear me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We can hear you now. It was breaking. Okay. Now he said in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse um, 21, he said, I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil. Satan is the stranger of the earth. All his demons are the strangers of the earth. So what are they doing? He said, I will give it to them for a spoil and they shall pollute it. Now, when they pollute it, what's the meaning of that? Meaning of pollution is that they will now craft it in a way that will not please God's work again. That means they are changing it from the thing that God made it for. They change it from the thing that God created it for. They, 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 they do it in a way that, oh, if God have created it for building, we will create it to pollute the earth. And why? 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 Why did they do like that? Satan now saw. He said, the gold and all the precious stone I told you was taken down to the earth. He said, who are the strangers of the earth? I've told you that is Satan. And Satan is angel. They are the strangers of the earth. They are not meant to be on earth. Heaven was their place, but they lose it. So hell was prepared for them. Hell was prepared for them. And I tell you, hellfire was never for a human being. Hellfire was never for a human being. How did gold become an idol to God? Praise the Lord. Many people that are not God's people use it to make image of God's, uh, no, God's idol, but it is used among the people of God to decorate the altar and temple. Praise the Lord. What is gold for? When the Israelites were living in Egypt, when they were living in Egypt, God told them to collect, to go and make a request, place a request among the Egyptians that they will collect gold and silver. Sorry, did God say they should collect it and wear it? Eh? No. God did not ask them to collect it and wear it. Well, what God said, 
God said, collect it. For you will use it to worship me in the wilderness. You use it for building of altar. That is why when they get to the wilderness at took a mountain, Orem, then God told Moses, he said, collect them to bring the goods they've collected from the Jewish according to how their heart have told them to bring, not to bring everything, so that when they get to Canaan land, they can still be rich. It's for trading. It's for wealth. So tell them to bring part of it for my building, for the altar. Now God begins to tell uh, Moses how to describe the how to build the altar with the gold and the rest. Let's see the book of Exodus chapter 39. Verse 20, another person, verse 30, another person, 28, verse 5 and to 9. Yes, let's see. Exodus chapter, Exodus chapter 39. Exodus 39. Yes. Exodus 39. I read verse 20. He said in verse 20, and they made two other gold rings and put them on the two sides of the effort underneath towards the four part of it over against the other coupling thereof above the curious griddle of the effort. This is what they are using God to do. That thing they normally hold the ark of the Lord, the hand, the legs. That's what God told them to use to go to build. He didn't tell them to wear it. And look at it again. In verse 30, let's just jump to verse 30. Let's jump to verse 30. He said, and they made the plate of the holy crown of pure gold and wrote upon it a written like the engraving of a signet of a signet holy to the Lord. Hallelujah. That is verse 30. You see, the gold we are to be used for the building of the temple, for the building of the altar, for the building of the plate, for the building of table. That is what gold is meant for. Because since they have lost their place of using it to build house. God wants it to be used to build materials, more such material as for plates. If you have a plate of gold, oh, you can use it to eat. It's not a sin. If you have a plate of a uh, bed of gold, you can sleep on it. It's not a sin because it shows how rich you are. Now, look at it. But be, you see, everything, see, God has planned for everything. Look at what he said in chapter 28, Exodus chapter 28, Exodus chapter 28. Exodus 28, yes, if you are there now, let's read verse 5. He said in verse 5, Exodus 28, verse 5, he said, And they shall take gold and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen. He said in verse 6, I said, And they shall make the effort of gold and of blue and of purple and of scarlet and of fine twin line and with cunning work. Did you see that? Gold is to be used for all those things. Used for building, used for house materials. So, what now happened? What now happened? What now happened? People, the, 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 the demons, the Satan changed the origin of gold. He changed it. Then he converted to what? He converted to earrings. Converted to rings. Converted to so many things. We have many, you know, this topic is a controversial, uh, controversial topic. It's a topic that whenever you touch it, oh, many questions arise. Many things come up. Why should it be like that? We don't supposed to be like that. Oh, we are doing this. The cool people that wear this, they go, who told you they wear it? How do you know they wear it? But look at what he said. Before I move on to tell you about this, let me, before I tell you, before we go to the second part that said, second part that said, the origin of opening of ears. Origin of opening of ears. You can write it down, origin of opening of ears. How did this start? The origin of opening of ears. The origin of opening of ears. Yes. Where, why and how and where and when did the opening of ears started? If you're a lady here and your ear is not open, can you wave your hand? Yes, my ear is not open. I didn't open my ear. My parent did not open it. Out of 200, whether we can see two, if we see one, we are lucky. Yes. Because it's not we that put it, it's our fault, it's our mommies and daddies. Before you grow up, pyam, they've teared the ear. Mm. My ear is it's, not open. Ah, congratulations. Open. Your ear is not open. Amen. But remember, that is not ticket to heaven. No. Amen. As your Amen. ear is not open, <laughs> don't allow your heart to open to the devil. So look Amen. at it. You see, it's hard to see those that their ear is not open. 
all of us that are ladies, our ear is one way or in fact, some of us, not only one, two or three is there, two holes or trees, two holes or trees, two holes or three that are there as hair, hair hole on our ear. Now, before I tell you that, the origin of opening of ears. Let's go to Exodus chapter 21, mm -hmm. verse 1 to 6. If you are there, you can read. Exodus 21, Exodus 21, I read. He said, let me start from verse 2. If thou buy a Hebrew servant, Exodus 21, yes, God bless, Exodus 21, verse 2 to 6. Exodus 21, verse 2 to 6, he said, If thou buy an Hebrew servant six years, he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go out free for nothing. In verse 3, he said, If he came in by himself, he shall go out by himself. If he were married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master have given him a wife, and she have borne him sons or daughter, the wife and her children shall be her masters, and he shall go out by himself. In verse 6, if he, the servant, shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out free. Look at what God told them. God now told them in verse 6, he said, Then his master shall bring him into the judge, into, uh, to bring him unto the judge, he shall also bring him to the door, or unto the doorpost, and his master shall boil his hell through with an all, and he shall serve him forever. That means opening of that ear, it shows that you are now a slave forever and ever. That means when that family has a visitor, they look you, they saw the holes in your ear. They know, oh, this one is not the member of the family, just a slave. No matter how beautiful you are, slave is slave. No matter how intelligent you are, slave is slave. No matter how good you are, slave is slave. No matter how you know how to talk, slave is slave. No matter how money you are, you have slave is slave. Now, take a look at it. He said, they will bear your ear. They will open the ear. They will put something there to identify. And why did God tell them that? So that when somebody wants to come and marry your daughter, they will not go and pick the slave daughter so that your own child will remain. No, 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 no. But what happened? Hey, when they saw that the slave now look more beautiful than those that did not use anything, everybody chose to become slave. Hallelujah. Everybody said, let us be slave. If that is why everybody <laughs> becomes a slave, automatically slave. Now everybody is now slave. Hallelujah. But it is good to be slave to Christ than rather to be slave to hearing. God bless you. Amen. Now, what, what's the meaning of that? You see, he's for slave, not for beauty. But the Israelites say, hey, our 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 uh, our slave now look more beautiful. Whenever somebody wants to come and marry them, they will first pick the slave. Ah, <laughs> the daughters tell their mothers, "Mommy, I can't wait to see this." In fact, since the slave open one ear, please open my own fifteen places. I must look more <laughs> beautiful than them. Hallelujah. And then, in fact, it gets to a time, the, 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 they look at themselves, they say, no, ah, it's like this ear is not enough. The men are not seeing us. Please open my nose, open my tongue, open my navel, open my, in fact, my cheek. Everywhere they pierce it. <laughs> and then they look beautiful then. They beat the slave by competition of opening ears. And then we become slaves. And they make it as a tradition. Hmm. <laughs> every little child, you can see when God is telling Abraham, he said every male child, make sure that you do what? Make sure that you circumcise them. He did not say every female child, make sure you tear their ear. Abraham, I forgot when I was creating Adam and Eve. So please help me tear them. Mm, help me devote them their ears. Mm. Now, we begin to tear their ears. Now, how many of us, when we open, see, if God wants you to open your ears, he will do it right from your mother's womb. God is the greatest act. He's the greatest act man that can design. He designed us. Look at the way he designed the hair of Americana. Look at the way he designed the hair of India. Look at the way he designed the hair of Chinese. Look at the way, even the eyes of Chinese at times make me to laugh. You see, their eyes, <laughs> the same eyes they have. Their eyes look like they are sleeping. But you and I, our eyes look more beautiful. I mean, of us, since we are copying 
things. You know, most of us today, we cream our body to become yellow. How many of us ever go for surgery for your eyes to look like Chinese? No. We like to copy the other side. How many of us want to rub cream to get black? No. Yeah. But it's all these things. We are just copying competition, this and that. Opening of ear. Today is not only men that open ear. Ear, not only women, men too. Even men now, I saw some men. They open not only ear, they open tongue. Jesus. And they are singing. And they are showing their tongue with their earring. Yeah. If I, I, I just that I don't know how to show, I will have show you some face now. I don't know how to show pictures on Zoom. I will have show you how, uh, show you some faces of men that have pierced 250 earrings on their faces. Oh, One of them pierced 1,000. He has 1,000 pierced on his faces. Earrings. That is to show you that, oh, Ear is no more enough. They have pierced the ear. There is no more place, space to peer again. So they start peering their body. But I'm still waiting for someone who will peer his eyes ball. It does not be possible. So that one we are still <laughs> Now, just take a look at this. Opening of ear. This is the origin of opening of ear. I think I've showed you now. Now, but due to the beauty it brings among the slaves, the, everyone was involved in it. Everyone was what was involved in it. Let me now tell you a story of what happened. There was this, a woman when he died. Please take a, take notes. A woman when he died, uh, he did something at the gate of heaven. The angel welcomed her. The angel welcomed her, but they did not open the gate for her to enter. She was there waiting. He said, ah, "Oh, this angel should open this gate. Jare, let me enter." And go and enjoy myself because they have showed her, they have showed her uh, the house that God built to her inside heaven. So they showed her she has, she was given 1,000 angels to be serving her. 1,000 angels. But the testifier of that revelation said over 1,000 angels. But I said 1,000 angels. Now look at it. He said they showed her her garment. Oh, her garment was. You know, was being you know booming with light. Now they now show her something again. They showed her her crown. The crown she was to use in heaven was decorated with over five hundred stars, precious stones. So a demon asked somebody. The testifier of this uh, revelation said he was there as working for the kingdom of darkness. He said, he asked question, why is this woman at the gate of heaven? He said, why is this woman having a star, uh, over 500 star on, his, on her crown? He said, the, uh, the demon told her and said, oh. he said, don't mind her. She's a pastor's wife on earth. He, she was, he doesn't have any job than to be preaching, evangelizing me, you know, streaming live, Facebook thing, you know, preaching everywhere, winning. So he said, I'm looking at them like, yeah, I'm looking at her. Him and his husband, they don't have job. They are useless on earth. They are just preaching, preaching, winning souls to heaven. Imagine, ordinarily the wife, he has won more than 500 souls to heaven. And now he wants to come and enter heaven. What a great loss to the kingdom of darkness. Ha! They were watching. All of a sudden, the gate of heaven refused to open for this woman to enter. As they were there, unfortunately, a giant demon came from back. And he knocked. He, knocked. He, he, he touched the back of the woman. He said, woman, you cannot enter. This place is not for you. The woman said, why would I not enter? I have served my God. I preach, I do this. He confessed from the day he was born until the moment he died. He even said that Jesus appeared to him before he died. Before she dies. The demon said, you are right. But the demon quoted Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. Let us go back there. Let's hear what the demon said to him. Ezekiel chapter 7. He quotes Ezekiel chapter 7. Are we all there? Ezekiel chapter, I want a fast reader. Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. What did he say? He said, 
and they shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the days of the wrath of God, of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their soul, neither fill their bowl, because it is stumbling block of their iniquity. He said, what is the meaning of that? The demon not told her. He said, woman, you thought you are wise. We came on earth to convince you to wear trousers, but your husband knows the truth. He refused. He monitor you. He caution you. You listen because you love your husband. You obey him. We come on earth. We make you to use ordinary powder to rub your face so we can raise accusation against you in heaven. But your husband refused. He, he teach you. You escape it. He said, we also enter your friends to convince you that at least putting eyelashes, wearing high heel is not a sin. Looking for accusation against you. He said, but your husband refused. He teach you. He correct you. He said, he wants you to be natural or else he will divorce you. And because you love him, you remain faithful to him and unto God. And you have no job on earth is than to be winning so, eh? making the kingdom of hell to lose souls. He said, but then we went to report to Satan. And Satan told us to leave you. That you are, at the end of your life, you will come to hell. That he have assigned something to you. And the woman said, and what is it? I have worked for my Lord. Jesus appeared to me before I die. And the demon said, you are joking. Just touch your ear, woman. And he touched the ear. He find out that there is, there is, uh, there, there's one earring they call full stop. I don't know how they call it. Is it full stop? Well, the first time I heard about full stop is when I'm writing letter, I put full stop. I don't know that it has come to earring. It has graduated to earring now. So they say, the, the testifier said, it is full stop earring that is in her ear. And the woman saw it. So she now tried to remove it. <laughs> they now, the angel said, ah, woman, it is true, for what is on you is polluted by these demons, by their, by, their, by their Lord. He said it was given to them according to how it is written. They now read verse, look at what the demon read for her, for the woman, in verse 20. He said at the last line of the verse, he said, therefore have I set it far from them. He said it was given to us, look at what he, he quote for the woman again in verse 21. In verse 21, he said, for it was given to us, we the strangers of the earth, and then that we should pollute it. He said, that what you are putting is polluted. And he now told the woman, he said, because the word of the Lord that created you said, if anything is polluted, it cannot enter. Let's go. The last verse they quote for the woman, Revelation chapter 21. See the last verse they quote for the demon, quote for the woman. Revelation 21, the book of Revelation 21. Hear what he told the woman. Revelation 21. And they said the woman should read it with her own mouth. May that never be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at what they said the woman should read. They asked the woman to read verse 27. Look at what they said. They said, and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. Anything that defileth. They told the woman, read it with your mouth. She read it. She read it. She read it. He said, anything that defiled. And then the demon said, your whole body is defiled. You are defiled. You can win thousands or so, but you got to suffer the, you got to suffer the pains or that that 500 so supposed to suffer in hell. You will bear it. And then a voice came out from heaven and told the woman, depart into internal domination. For I know you not. All the works was condemned. All the work was condemned. What is the reason? Because he had heard that a ring is no good. He said, but he did not believe it. He said, if I can be holy, my heart is holy. I see revelation. I prophesy. I see vision. Ah, if this earring is in my ear and I do this, he can't be a sin now. Even Jesus appeared to me in the dream, and he also appeared to me before I died. The woman shouts, Jesus! Jesus was in her mouth, and he landed in hell. Bam. I want to ask you a question, please. How would devil welcome her 
when he's about to enter hell, knowing that he has have made 500 to escape hell. I don't know. I know devil will cook Indomie and egg for her to welcome her with Bobo. Mm. Mm. They will welcome her, say, ah, come home, my daughter. Mm. Come home. Mm. It will be so terrible. They will put her on the special part of hell. Jesus. Because you have, you have terrified the kingdom of hell. By, see, that is it. You see, whether you believe it or not, that is it. The book of Genesis, that is the origin of hell, uh, the origin of earring. The book of Genesis called earring, strange gods. In the Genesis chapter 35, verse 4, that is popular verse for all of us. We know it. When, the, when Jacob told the... When Jacob told his wife, he said, oh, let us go to Bethel. They remove it. They remove it. They value it. They remove it. They know it as an idol. Why did they take it to be an idol? Look at this. Idol. Well, you know they call it there? Strange gods. It is an idol. What's the meaning of that? Let's see. In, in, Re- in Exodus chapter 20. Let's see. Exodus chapter 20. Mm. Ezra chapter 20. Ezra chapter 20. Uh, think. <laughs> Let's go to Ezra chapter 20, verse 3. Verse 23. Ezra chapter 20, verse 23. If you are there, you can read. <laughs> Ezra chapter 20, verse 23. If you are there, you can read. Ezra chapter 20, verse 23. You can read. Ezra chapter 20, verse 23. Yes, God bless you. You shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. Do you see? So, so the wife of Jacob, Rachel, he remember it. So, oh, God has told us. God has told our forefather, we should not make him. We should not make this. So, he had to remove it. They have to recognize it. Why? Because God rebuked them when they used it for an idol in the wilderness before God wanted to even when God has, when Moses had pleaded, pleaded, pleaded for God said, I will destroy these people. I will destroy them. Moses said, okay, if we destroy them, remove my name in the book of life. If we not forgive them. Moses I will not remove your name. I will remove anybody that has sinned against me. I will remove the name. Moses said, but forgive them. God said, I will not forgive them. I will kill them today. I will destroy them. I will wipe them out of service of the earth. But when Moses keep pleading, God now look. God said, well, Moses, Moses, if I will talk to them, if I will even come in the midst of the camp to talk to them, if they must, if I, they must stand before my presence, let us see what he told them in, in Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Let's hear what he told them. Exodus 33. Let's hear what he told them. Are we all there? Yes. Exodus chapter 33. I start from verse 1 to 6. He said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart and go hence, and die thy people which thou hast brought out, brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. In verse 6, he said, And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, and the Amorite, and the Ittite, and the Perizzite, and the Hivite, and the Jebusite unto the land flowing with milk and honey, for I will not go up to the midst of thee, for thou art a stinking people, stinking nice people, lest I consume thee in the way. And in verse 4 he said, and when the people had this evil tide, they mourned, and no man did put on his ornaments. Can you hear that? They refused yes. to put it on. They refused it. They said they did not put on the ornament. In verse 5 he said, and the Lord had for the Lord has said unto Moses, say unto the children of Israel, ye are stiff, stiff neck people. I will come upon in, I will come up unto thee, unto the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore, now put off thy ornament. His order. They commanded them to. It is order. Though you may be wearing it today and go to church and fire a nose falling from heaven to consume you. <laughs> but in the last day, do you know the meaning? In the last day, the fire will be so intense. It will be so intense in hell. 
He said, therefore now put off thy ornament from thee that I may know what to do unto thee. It is God that said to when you want to call, he said, put it off from you. So that I will even think about punishment I will give you. Put it off from you so that I will know what to do to you. Look at what he said in verse 6. Can everybody, I want everyone to read verse 6. Verse 6. 1, 2, 3, go. Let's read verse 6. Did you see? And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornament by the Mount Horeb. Praise the Lord. They stripped themselves by the Mount Horeb. They removed it. They removed it. How God children should dress. Praise the Lord. There come now the main topic now. I've told you the origin of gold, how it was created, what it was meant for. Let's see what is here. How God's children should dress. Praise the Lord. I want you to write it down. How God's children should dress. 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 There's an adage that goes like this. They say, dress the way you want to be addressed. Praise the Lord. Dress the way you want to be addressed. I just pity somebody that says looking for a job. You now, you now put a demonic hair on your head. You now carry crazy hair like one demon in hell. And then you enter an office. You say you are looking for a job. Eh? When it's not a demon from hellfire that is the manager there. And then you enter with your ear that look like does be. You enter your ear that is smelling. You enter you even perfect. Mm. You not enter suit. Your ear look like your hand look like uh, you know in Yoruba. Uh, please let's see to our mic, please. In, in Yoruba, they said in Yoruba they used to call them one woman beraga. When it suits, you to make us be proud. If you are not proud, once you enter suit, you become proud. No, no, I'm not talking about people over there. It's their culture, but here in Nigeria, when you enter suit, you look like you are proud because it will make your two hands to go up like this. Mm. You look like this, and then they think you have something. Mm. That's how you look here. So now, just take a look at it. You you are looking for a job, and in that company, as a lady, you now wear spaghetti and indomie. Though it is now a a a. a a, a command that you must dress like that. But some companies are not that mad to employ mad people. Mm. And number one, you say you're a Christian. You now wear short something. Mm? Yes. Even some of us, we are so holy that our skirt is so long but tight. The shape of your pants is showing there. And then you enter. You go and bend down in front of the manager. You want to entice the manager. You want to get the job because your certificate cannot get it. You want the shape of your buttock to get the job. And then you will start. And you come and give us testimony here that God provide the job for you. Hallelujah. Praise the, uh, praise the Lord. People rejoice with me. I got the job I've gotten is under this 21 days. God has given me the grace to get the job. What kind of job is that? You will not come and share it. You will say that your buttock have granted you the grace to get the job. Not we. Not the word of God. God don't give you that. Now, take a look at it. You see, you, you enter, you enter, you, see, you, you carry the crazy hair on your head and you appear. Don't you know the way you appear? If the person there is born again, when he look at you, he believes that demon have entered the company. They cast you out. Though you may not shout Holy Ghost fire. And you come and say, oh, I look for the job, I did not get it. May God have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. How you are to dress. Dress the way you want to be addressed. <laughs> you must dress the way you want to be addressed. That's just it. Now, let's go to the main point that said, Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. We are going to explain this place today. I tried to explain it the other day, but there was no more time because after teaching, we are trying to look at, you know, attend to people. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. Uh, I want us to explain that place very well. We need to get the truth. Already we are here. Fine. We have known the truth. We have come out of the world, but we must hear the truth and then believe it. Yes, we must believe it. Now, First Timothy chapter one. First Timothy chapter one, uh, chapter two. I mean, chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. If you are there, yes. First Timothy chapter two. Mm. 
for Timothy. Now, let's go to verse 9. He said, In like manner also that women adore themselves in modest apparel. What's the meaning of that? Let me explain that. Modest apparel. Modest apparel. That is, uh, maybe it is a pity I can't be showing pictures. I try to get it. I will have shown the pictures. I, I don't know who I can call on Zoom here. I don't know who I can see complete. I, I like to use somebody as an example. Uh, because thank God, well, I'm not a woman. I will use myself as an example. Modest apparel. Modest apparel. Modest apparel. What is the meaning of that? Modest apparel. Modest apparel. Uh, but let me use some people. I will mention some names. I believe by the special grace of God, they are dressing in modest apparel. Let me use our mommy, Teresa, for example. God bless you, mommy. God bless you mightily, the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you richly. Now, take a look at our mommy. You see, even at God bless you. In fact, see, on the day of rapture, you will not miss it in Jesus' name. For standing up, mommy, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now, just take a look at that. You see, our mommy like this, let me tell you, despite her age, is still covering all part of her body. But over here in Nigeria, they say there is no, there is no old woman in Ghana. Kosarubon Ghana. What's the meaning of that? Everybody wants to remain young by painting the leaves. If some people now they put something on their ear, on their eye, they look like tiger. Some people don't grow nails. Ah, and they are using that hand to lift it up. Bible said, lift up the holy hands. They lift up a lion hand. Lion hand, lion snakes. Some people, they paint their mouth. So that they now look like they are smoking in their hand. Now, they appear, they appear on the church and they are shouting, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And they come to show the style of hair they make. They are shaking the hair. They don't know they are dancing at the gate of hell. Now, the truth is this. Dress what you want to be dressed. Modest apparel. What is not modest apparel? Apparel that covers your body. Apparel that is not coarse. Apparel. The clothes that when you wear it, modest apparel. The clothes when you wear it, the size of your buttock will not show. The size of the pants you wear inside will not show. The size of the boxers will not show. The size, you see, modest apparel, when you stand, no man will look at you and lost. No man will look at you and lost. What's the meaning of that? Why did God want us to dress like that? Look at what, look at what Jesus himself said. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28, he said, if any man should look onto a woman, Abby, and lost after her, he said, he has slept with the woman already in his heart. Now, in that case, there, I now call anybody that is not dressing in modest apparel, you are what we know as spiritual prostitute, which is more dangerous than the physical prostitute. Hallelujah. Spiritual prostitute, what is that? Physical prostitute can slept with 20 men in a day. Yes, 20 men in a day. It still can't be still manageable. Yes, 20 men in a day. It's making her money. But spiritual prostitute, when you dress like dog, and then you come out, you are walking on the street, over 20, 30, 50, 100, 5,000 men have looked at you, lost it in their heart. That means over 20,000 men have slept with you in their heart. Can't you see? You're a spiritual prostitute. <laughs> and then your own punishment will be more greater. Dress in modest apparel. And he said, with shamefaded face. What's the meaning of that? We have to dress and cover our face very well. Some women, because they have used eyelashes to do their face, they now look their face. They look like monkey. They look like monkey. Today on Facebook, today on uh, social media, you see them. Everybody wants to snap and do much like monkey. They do. They, they put their mouth on the air. And then you see them. They, they, they are laughing. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, everybody's not a dog that. and monkey on Facebook. They, 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 call, they call it selfie, selfie, selfie. Yeah. They want to selfie themselves. <laughs> After selfie yourself on Facebook with your long mat that look like needle, your mat look like pig. Yeah, pig. You now come to church to shout hallelujah with it. You say, with shamefaced face, cover your face. 
put your head very well. But because you have made our hair, hmm, we have put all those things. Hallelujah. 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 The thing is paining me. And I know it's paining Christ as well. Because he's now in the church. He's now in the church. Now, just take a look at it. You see, they, they come there with their mouth. That is it. They, they, on Facebook, they are pig. In the church, they are dog. At home, they are spiritual prostitute. Now, they say, with shamefulness, and he said, with sovereignty, and then with the brooded hair. You see, you are not to fry your hair. That's what you know, brother. You are not to bake it. Some people, some ladies, let me tell you, you bake your hair. Do you know the reason why some ladies don't think right? Because when you bake your hair over six months, because you put attachment mm -hmm. for six months, water cannot touch your, for your head. It cannot touch your head. Now, tell me, how will you think right when every time there is no water touching it? No, so you can't think right. Because, you, you, you see, the hair is baked like bread. And then, you, you see, here in Nigeria, when I look at them, they come, you know, when they have put all those things, see, somebody that not see money to eat, you now go and buy the most costly Brazilian hair and put it on the head. Now, when he's walking, some beat him because he needs to bath. When he bath, they are bathing stuff from their neck, mm, like snake. They are bathing stuff from their neck. And then, when the bath finish, they come out. Their head cannot be touched with water. Then they are walking. Immediately, some beat the head. They carry biro. You see that? Mm, they begin to use the biro to choke their head because they are killing some rat and snake inside the head. Because the hair is full of poisonous things. And then you call yourself Christian. And there is hair fire in your head. You are trying to kill those people making noise inside. It's imagine internal punishment created by yourself. You see, he said, stop baking your head. Now, what did he say again? He said, or oh, gold or peers. What's the mean of that? Gold or peers. We are still talking about that. My, uh, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. He said, or oh, gold on here. What's the mean of that? Gold. You see, gold now come back here again. Gold. Gold that have been converted to earrings. Gold that have been converted to earrings. Silver that have been converted to earrings. Eh? To rings. What pastor died and go to hell with all his mess holiness messages? The testifier of that revelation said, Ah, he said, when I appear in hell with the Lord Jesus, he said, We met this man of God, and this man of God was shouting, he was crying. When he immediately saw Jesus, he said, Oh, Jesus, you have come. I know you will come for me. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm in hell. Please save me. I preach your message. I live a holy life. I do this, I do that. And Jesus said, Oh, servant of the Most High, you will know the reason why you are here. But you will answer me this question. He said, my son, when I create Adam and Eve, did I join them together with ring? He said, no. He now asked him question. Where did you get your own ring? Being a holiness preacher. Ha! He looked at his hand where the ring was there. He tried to pull it off. And the Lord said, it is too late. One shall cover you. He said, you preach. Many people copy you because they say, if our pastor can be so holy and be preaching and have wedding ring in his finger, that means it's good. That means it is good. We can wear it. And now you have pushed so many people to hell. He cried. And warm cover him in hell. Can you imagine? Wedding ring. Oh, some people say, you see, I, I, I heard our sister said, oh, the person you want to marry does not believe in holiness. The church is going, does not believe on you, all this holiness. When they see, when they so call CHMI end time SDN, when anybody call this group, uh, this stuff, this holiness stuff, they don't believe in this holiness stuff. Eh? You want to enter inside that place, my dear? You are about to enter into Panebita. Because you must surrender. It's either you do what, it's either you become what you want you to become. Because this is how we start to, on the wedding day. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. 
just make up today for me. Make up today for me, and then I will allow you to continue your holiness something. I will not disturb you. Only thing you need to do is just make up. Let's go, go for registry. Make up. Put it on. Just yes, yes, yes. If you cannot, just, uh, if you know you love me, do it. Then you now you now paint. You just become the Jezebel of today. Tomorrow you can be the Mary that give birth to Jesus Christ tomorrow. What about if rapture happen immediately? See, this message is not friendly to those that love the things of the world. No, this message is not for anyone who is still pretending to be a, a, a believer. No, it is for genuine born again. It is for those who want to make heaven. It is for those that have decided. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I don't know how many earrings Mary, the mother of Jesus, put on. I know. Uh -uh. I don't know earrings. All the you see, all those people. And then we are here killing ourselves with what it does not matter. Look at it there. Look at it. He said, he said, how we should dress. I'm still explaining it. He said, or gold. We are not to put on gold there. Bible has said it. Or peers. He said, peers. Peers. What is the name of that? Peers. You know, when you pierce your body, you don't need to do that. God, you see, God will judge everyone with this verse if you do it. But thank God. If you have opened your ear, I know many questions are waiting for me. Many questions are waiting. Oh, my ear is open. I'm not the one that opened it. Oh, who, who will the punishment go to? Is it my mommy or me? We shall answer that later. Let's preserve that answer to when you ask your question. God bless you. And then he said, that is, that, that is he said, or peers or costly areas. Some people said they are born again. Hey, born again. Or you are competing with the world to put on the most costly cloth on your body. Okay, can I ask a question? What cloth is raining in uh, Europe now? What pair of cloth is raining there? Please, can anybody tell me? It's going to fall. Don't what cloth that when you wear it now, they know that you are the you have money? Marcus. Marcus. Hey, God bless you, my brother. Marcus. Mm. Marcus. Mm. I know that cloth. That is one on that is one on fire now. Marcus. Marcus or Gucci. <laughs> Marcus <Yeah>. or Gucci. <laughs> Just take a look at it. Too. Look at that. The last, the last line of that First Timothy chapter two verse nine. That's the meaning of it. He said, "Or oh, costly area." <laughs> Marcus is one of them. Now you see somebody that call himself born again because you have money. You now go and buy Marcus or Gucci. You now wear it. You now want to preach to somebody. Do you want the person you are preaching to to go and steal? You want him to go and stay? Because when he look at you like this, he say, ah, if this is, a, even some people say, oh my, they use it to preach. They say, our Jesus is not poor. God is not the God of poor. Who told you? There are still some poor people in Israel at that time. And God take care of them. Yes. And God is not ashamed to be called their God. And then you said, God is not the God of poor. If he said, God is not the God of poor, didn't Lazarus make heaven? Wasn't he poor? Now, even the rich man went to hell. Now, just take a look at it. Just take a look at it. Eh? Can you see it? Please listen to our mic. Can you see it? You want to compete with the world. Anything costly is for the world. If you are wearing chain, chain wrist watch, ah, something happened. Right here in Nigeria, in our group, when we are praying, a sister in our midst went on revelation. When, he, when she woke up, she said something. There's a mother. There's a mother in our group. It's a mother. It's a mother to us. It's a mother to me. This mother is born again. Yes, she, she has sacrificed everything to God. He now told me, he said, hey, mommy, so, so, so is going to hell. The Lord said, if she died today, she will go to hell. I say impossible. If mother, so, 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 go to hell. That means my heaven have a question mark. I said, what happened? He said... The Lord said that I should go. I should tell you to go and tell her. Uh, if this mother, whenever we gather again, I will show you. I will show her to you. I will show her to the to the uh, to the uh, the screen so everybody can see. He says she's having a wristwatch made of silver and gold. He said if that wristwatch is in her hand on the day she will die, we will not see the face of Christ. I told this sister, I said, look, since I know this mommy, I never see three squash in her hand. I can bear witness. He said, the Lord showed me. I, we argue on it. I said, okay, let me go and ask her. 
Because of this, I left her there. I quickly went there. I called the mommy. Hello, mommy, are you in the shop? He said, yes. I went there. He's a nurse. Mm -hmm. I call, I went there. I said, Mommy, please. Uh, I'm sorry to ask you this question, please. We are we we are talking about something, but I want to confirm, please. Um, sorry. Do you have this watch? He said, Yes. I said, Can you bring it out? Mm -hmm. he, he put hand under his says uh, this thing, he brought it out. Lo and behold, it was made of silver and gold. Ha. Mm -hmm. I said, mommy, is it this watch you normally wear? He said, yes, you wear it to go to church on Sunday. I said, mommy, Jesus said, if you wear this rich watch, you will go to hell. The woman said, mm, eh, this rich watch will take me to hell. He said, yes. He said, my son, I have given everything for God. I will not allow this rich watch to take me to hell. Immediately in my presence, he removed the two hands and threw it inside the dustbin and call these smaller people. They change the wrist watch to leather hand, leather, and he start to wear it. Hey! I never believed that the mommy wear that wrist watch because I never see it in her hand. And some people say, oh, my God is not a God of power. I'm wearing God's wrist watch. As if his God's wrist watch will take you to heaven. Let me tell you, the God's wrist watch, if he die with it and he appear in hell, it will become a serpent in your hand. It will be biting you for the rest of your life there. You see the like people, they don't wear it. You see people, they don't wear it. You see Martin of Fire, they don't wear it. You think they don't want to look beautiful. Everybody wants to look beautiful, but because what is attached, what is involved, everybody wants to look beautiful, but nobody wants to go to hell. <laughs> nobody wants to go to hell. So that is it. Dress the way you want to be addressed. But Bible said, don't dress yourself with costly area. Don't dress in the way that when you pass, when you pass, they'll say, hey, he's passing. This is dressed to keep. Let me tell you, Jesus Christ dressed in a way that he, he and his disciples, their clothes were the same. That's why when they want to arrest him, they could not identify him. Judas had to identify him with kiss. Because Jesus did not say, I am the leader. Let me dress the, let me dress the most, let me dress with the most costly clothes. No. They almost dress, even Judas dressed more costly than, than Jesus. May the Lord save our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. May the Lord save us in the mighty name of Jesus. We should dress the way we want to be addressed. Why you must be different as God's children. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. If you are there, can you read? 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. If you are there, can you read? Mm -hmm. First Peter chapter 2. Peter 2. Yes. Read verse 9 and 10. Yes. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Okay. Which in time past were not a people. But are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Let me tell you, if you say you receive Jesus, even if we don't know your lifestyle, whether your lifestyle has changed, at least you should start with your dressing. How can you say you, you receive Jesus and the, your neighbor cannot testify by your dress? Ordinary your dress, you know. We're not talking about your attitude now. We know that your attitude will take you long. But what about your dressing? You say you have accepted Christ, but your short skirt have not grown long. You say you have accepted Christ. Your trouser that is falling down has not grown up. Because we are in the generation where trouser grow down, trouser is falling, skirt is running to the breast of a woman. We are in so generation. We have clothes become so tight. Eh? Become so tight. Very tight that it looks like we are not wearing clothes again. If you receive Jesus, there must be difference. And because we are choosing people, look at what he said. But you are a choosing generation, a royal priesthood. 
people, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should sue forth the praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Look at what he said in verse 10. He said, which in time past we are not people, but now a people, now the people of God. Before they don't know you, but now you say you are known. Let me tell you, if you say you are a Christian, eh? if you say you are born again, my brother, my sister, if you say you are born again, eh? and you are walking on the street, somebody said, ah, my sister, eh, what are you dressing like this? Oh, he said, I'm born again now. Eh, I like you. Yes, 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 I like you. Your dressing is like us. Ah, you are dressing like one of us. I even like, what church are you going? I'm going to CHMI. Eh, ah, I like you, your, your church. I like your gathering. Eh? See, your hair tie is like our own in the world. Eh? Your skirt is so tight like our own. In fact, next Sunday, call me. I want to join you and go to CHMI. Eh? In fact, such person, you are a disgrace to Christ. You are, you are, you are a disgrace to the body of Christ. Hmm? If the people of the world can still see your dressing after you say you are born again, and they say they still want to be like you because of your dressing, hmm? because you dress like them. Oh, we like you because uh, ah, we just like your dressing. Your you dressing is like us now. Ah, no changes. <laughs> yes, we love you. You are a disgrace. A disgrace. And I pray you will not be a disgrace for Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. But if you say you are born again, your dressing must make people to complain that are you the one that killed Jesus? Yes. You know, when you come out, if, if you come out and then he said, hey, my sister, what is it? What happened to you? But yesterday you dressed like a prostitute. What now happened that now? You are dressing as if you are catching cold. Ah, my sister, <laughs> I have just accepted Christ yesterday night. After we left there, I was passing by. I saw a man of God preaching. The preaching touched me. I just find out that the way I'm living my life, eh? So you two, they have captured you. Mm? So you two have collected this madness of Christianity. If the world have not said that to you, you have not accepted Christ. If they have not called you and tell you that, ah, uh -uh, what have happened to you? Don't you see, at, at this your early age, you are dressing like 90 years old woman. It means you have not accepted Christ. Mm? You have not accepted Christ. Because if you accept, there must be difference in your attitude, in your dressing, in your talking, in your behavior. Your behavior, your behavior, your behavior, your behavior. Now let's look at that. <clears throat> let's look at that. There, there are some subset of Christians known as it doesn't matter Christian. Praise the Lord. Let's write it down. It doesn't matter Christian. It doesn't matter Christian. It doesn't matter Christian. Let's meet our mic. It doesn't matter Christian. It doesn't matter Christian. Yes. Who are those Christians? It doesn't matter, Christian. It doesn't matter, Christian. It doesn't matter, Christian. Hmm. Who are this set of Christians? These are the Christians that defend the devil. It doesn't matter, Christian. They say it is our heart that matters. Using jewelries, it does, it's not a sin. Dressing worldly but cover our body is not a sin. Wearing a costly cloth is not a sin. Even the, wearing a costly cloth, after all, we use it to cover our body, is not a sin. Is it is not worldly? This set of Christians are Christians that say it doesn't matter, and devil use them to defend. Then they use the book of First Samuel, chapter sixteen, verse seven, to defend their sin by saying. God look to the heart and not to the body. God also look at our body, not only on the heart. If God did not want us to dress, if God wants us to dress in costly areas, he would want us, he would tell us, please dress in costly areas. He would not say, and not with costly areas, as he said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. He will not tell us that. Look at what he said in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Can anybody read that? Another person, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. But first, let's read Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Can you see that? 
which is your reasonable service. You present your body. Present your body. <laughs> present your body. What does mean of that? It means make the body to look presentable. Make the body to be acceptable. Put on the body. Put something on that body that will make it to be acceptable unto God. Why we should dress holy. Yes. Why we should dress to have. I think we talk about this. Now, you see it. These are the Christians that defend the devil. But God said, after they have quoted First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, what about Romans chapter 12, verse 1, that says, present your body as a living sacrifice acceptable unto God, to be acceptable unto God. Look at what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. If you are there, you can read 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. He said, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. He said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicator, nor adulterer, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves, of themselves, mankind. You see, the body, the body needs to be put in order. The body need to be put in order. The body need to be put in order. So, the, sorry, I read the verse, it's verse 19, sorry. He said, what, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. That is what he's trying to tell us. Our body is the temple of God. Why? Why do we want to destroy the temple? with what we are putting on. God has told us what to put in the temple. God told, God told Moses how to dress the temple. He told Moses what to dress, how to dress it, the kind of color. That, that is why God said, let us dress in modest apparel. If you must call your body my temple, use modest apparel to cover it. That is what God is trying to tell you. Use modest apparel. Set of people who will miss rapture. What is the meaning of this? There are set of people that will miss rapture. Praise the Lord. There are set of people that will miss rapture. Set of people that will miss rapture. Now, if these people have this, look at it. Once you find yourself that <laughs> after you have deal with the body, eh, you know some people, they say, oh, I will dress righteous. Let me tell you, that, that you dress like Mary and Maka in this place does not mean you will enter heaven. Yes. That I cannot see your ear. You know some of us, we are not wearing earrings now. But in our heart, we are wearing big earrings. In our heart, we are making up. We make up in our heart. Some of us, we don't wear earrings. We appear holy. Mm? You know, in, in Nigeria, I saw some people, they wear one earring. It looks like tire. It looks like a takata tire. It looks like all this uh, tire, moto tire. I don't know how they manage to wear it. Ah. It doesn't irritate <laughs> them. It's very big. And they wear it. In fact, if you want to talk to them and they don't listen, just drag the earring. You control them. They don't need to, they can't refuse you because just drag the earring, they obey you because they have already put hook there that drag me here. This is my medulla blangata inside my earring. They can control them. So that is how they look like. So now you see, he said, but look at it, some set of people that we miss rapture. <laughs> So, uh, hey, thank you. God bless you. They call it Channel O. God bless you. Channel O. God bless you. Yes. I see them. It's very big that a baby head can pass inside that hole. And then they wear it and pass on the road. I don't know how they feel. Oh. Mm, I don't know how they feel. May God save us in the mighty name of Jesus. And the funny thing, most of us now, because we are coming to Zoom, we will not wear it. Oh. If I come on Zoom, Jesus, they will they will criticize me. They will ah, they will say all oh, this preaching did not enter me. Then you remove it and put it outside. Who are you deceiving? Mm. Who are you deceiving? You are deceiving yourself. There are three people you cannot deceive. You cannot deceive yourself. You cannot deceive God. You cannot deceive Satan. <laughs> These are three people you cannot deceive because you know yourself. These three people know you better. They knows you better, even more than where you know yourself. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Set of people that will miss rapture. If anything is in your body, if you have any earring in your body and then trumpet sound, you will miss rapture. Because the earring will become a stumbling block. Look at what he said in Ezekiel chapter 7, 
verse 19. He said, it shall be a stumbling block. A stumbling block, you will not be able to fly in the last day. Any man that put on one earring, you are a shame to your generation. You are a shame to your generation. What is the meaning of that? You are a shame to your generation. Any man that put on those things, you are a shame to your what? To your generation. Yes, you are a shame to your generation. And then you are, in fact, I don't know what I should call you. I don't know what I should call you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to pray this prayer before we go to the last point. I want you to pray this prayer that Lord, don't allow the thing I used my money to buy to take me to hell. Some of us, we will go to hell, not because we are sinner, but because of the things we use our money to buy. Yes, sir. Because of the tight crisis, we use our money to buy. You know, I've been talking about ladies. What about men? Some men. Hmm? If you go to the uh, book of Luke, chapter 16, verse 19, he said, there was a certain rich man who is clothed with purple, lean, and fine clothes. Let me tell you, there was a fine boy, fine man, that are clothed with tight trousers. They tight themselves. They want their stupid boot up to show. They sag and their dirty boxers are showing. <laughs> they want to entice people. The boxer you have not watched. This message to, should read to many people on Facebook, on YouTube. And then you see them, you, 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 you sag. You sag with the crazy hair on your head. And you come, you stand on the altar. You are singing with hymn books. And you are singing. He's singing, he's singing hallelujah. With all this crazy hair on your body, with all this thing you are doing, and you, you are singing. You are singing. You are choir master. Uh-uh. Why are you deceiving? What did you take God for? Just because we are in time of grace does not mean we should continue in sin that grace should abound. You're going to open your mouth and pray and say, Father, don't allow the thing I use my money to buy to take me to hell. Let's open our mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Now, let me tell you this. Some people, they say they keep love air. Yes. Let's talk about men now. If I run up. Now, men. Some men, you see them, they fry their air like Pastor Chris Oyekilomi. I mentioned the name because we know him very well. He's a popular man. Oh, yes. We fry our ear. We jericho it. You want to look good. You too, you are frying your ear. You are baking your head like women too. Not only women that are crazy. Men too are crazy too. And you see, you see them. They bake their hair. They, they want to look good. Oh, see me. We are on time. We are in time. Yeah. Your hair too. They, they, they jericho it. They not rub cream. They not comb it. Let it bring spot, spotting way. So that it will be like the hair is sleeping. But when the hair has grown, oh, they say, can't you watch Jesus film? Jesus to have long hair. Who told you? Where was it written that Jesus have long hair? Oh, the Jews that are have Jesus, are the, the Americans too, they have long hair. Even Paul too that preach, they have long hair. Who told you that? How do you know? Hmm? Let, 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 let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians, are we all there? Can somebody read verse 14? 11, 14. Let's talk about men with long hair. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14, yes? I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let not even 
nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Can you imagine that? He said, this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. When they begin to say, oh, we know we must copy what is going on. We must put our long hair. He said, do it not in evil nature teaches you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. <laughs> it's a big question here. That big question that did Jesus have long hair? I don't know. Why are we keeping long hair? Why do we try <laughs> to make it long? I don't know. That is a question we should be answering later. <laughs> and some people say, oh, I will not. Women, some women will say, I see some women prophesying without their hair covering. Look, we are to cover our hair here. What did I say? We are to cover our head here. Do, do, do you understand? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse four, verse five. Verse five. Yes. Verse five. Verse five. I'm reading First Corinthians chapter eleven, verse five. Yes. I read it. God's name. Amen. Amen. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her hair uncovered, dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she, as if she were shaven. Praise the Lord. So women just say, oh, that play that, that thing is for the Israelites. It's not for us. I mean, I first believe that all the laws God gave these realities for us. If you are there, can you raise up your hand? Can you wave your hand? God bless you. I believe on all the laws that God gave these realities is also for me. God bless you. Okay, I mean, I first did not believe it. I mean, I first did not believe it. I don't believe it is for these realities. We're in the New Testament. Now, the point is this. If you say you don't believe it, can we sing the Abraham? I mean, I mean, I first used to sing Abraham song. Oh, yeah. Once you go, let's sing Abraham. Blesses are mine. Yeah. Hallelujah. Abraham, blesses are mine. Hallelujah. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham, blesses are mine. God bless you. Okay, let's sing it like this. Abraham Soros am I. Hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Abraham <laughs> failures am I. Oh, yeah, yes. Why are we not singing? Oh. Nobody wants to sing with me. No. <laughs> Nobody wants to sing that song. Now, we claim the good part of Abraham blessing. We don't claim the law given to his children. And we say we are children of Abraham by faith. We are only for faith to copy the good parts. The law is not for us. A woman that will come and say, Oh, Rika, bo, 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 oh, rente, se, bo, ro, kete, te, ah, Rika, ba, ba, kaboshi, kaboshi. And then your hair is open. I look at, I just laugh. And they say, Hey, hey, Rika, bata, say, Rika, bata. Oh, the Holy Spirit is here. He's moving. He's moving where? He's moving inside your stomach. Or inside your head. And then you are there prophesying. And at the end of the day, you come out, you say, Rika Sata, Rika Sata. Yes, it has, the Lord has spoken. <laughs> you will just be there prophesying. Rapture will take place. They will come and tell you that rapture has happened. They will come to inform you. They will call your phone. They will say, hello, what are you doing? They say, mom is prophesying. Daddy is prophesying. They say, okay, tell him that it has happened. <laughs> <laughs> May God save our soul in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know. Something, something has gone wrong. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. And then... If your ear are having earrings, it will not go. In fact, if everything written in Romans chapter 1, verse 29 to 30 is in your life, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, if any of this sin is in your life, you will not go in the day of rapture. Just know that you are a candidate of Antichrist. You will be tormented and tortured. Uh, so, but try as much as possible to escape in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, let me now talk about much more about the temple of God. Temple, temple of God. Temple of God. Temple of God. What happened to the first temple that made God to now say our heart, our body is the temple? There is something that happened to the first temple. Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to write, write it down. What happened to the first temple of God? 
What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? Hey, I said this teaching is not for, it will make some people angry. Some people on Facebook, they will get yeah. angry. What is condemning us? It's judgmental. Eh? Children to dress well. Don't worry, my sister, dress well and visit Satan in hell. Hmm? Dress well and enter. So all of you are running for dog now, most of us. We cannot visit dog. We run, but you enter the house of dog in hell. Mm. Uh, house of dragon. Where you will run inside darkness, you will not know where you are running to. Because of earring, because of makeup, because of trousers, because of one earring. Some men, they put on one earring, they look like cow. And they say they look beautiful. You are copying footballers. Now, take a look at it. What happened to the first temple of God? Mm. What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? What happened to the first temple of God? Hallelujah. What happened to the first temple of God? Now, let, let's look at what happened to the first temple. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. Something happened to the first temple of God there. So let us rectify the reason why God moved the temple into our body now. God said to use our body. Isaiah chapter 1, let me start from verse um, I start from verse 11 and 12. He said, he said, to what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice unto me? Then the Lord, I am full of burnt offering of rams and the fat of the... Fa please, let's meet our mic. Let's meet our mic, please. He said, I am full of the burnt offering of ram and of fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullock or of lamb or of goats. In verse 12, he said, please let's be to our mic. In verse 12, he said, when ye come to appear before me, who had acquired this at, thy, at your hand to trade my court? Praise the Lord. What happened? This is what happened. In those days, God said, if anybody, you know, because for your sin to be forgiven, you must keep something. You must keep pigeon. You must keep fowl. You must keep gold. So what they now do, the priests are there to kill it in the temple and to pray for you. So if Mommy Teresa offend, uh, uh, offend Evangelist Hope, then Evangelist Hope will now say, eh, you offend me, Abby. <laughs> Before I deal with you, because this offense is great, let me go and buy cow. Before I deal with you, then you will quickly go and buy cow and come and deal with Mommy Teresa, deal with her very well, and then carry the cow to church, to the temple for forgiveness of sin. They will kill it and forgive. Then immediately is leaving there. He too has offended Sister Joy Carlo. Then Sister Joy Carlo say, eh, okay, before I deal with you, you will quickly go and buy he goes and come and deal with him very well. Quickly carry the gold to the temple. So everybody was rushing and coming. The altar was busy killing and blood was everywhere stinking. In fact, blood did not dry on the altar. Ah! God said, what is this? <laughs> God has to cry out. He said, what purpose of this multitude of your sacrifice unto me? What are you people doing? You are polluting my altar. He said, when you come to appear before me, who had required this at your hand to trade my altar like this, to pollute my altar with blood? He now said in verse 13, bring no more vain oblation, incense is abomination unto me. The new moon and the Sabbath, the calling of he called all of them. He said, stop it. I don't want it anymore. He told them, look at what he said in verse 14. Because they've polluted the, the altar. He said, your new moon and your appointed feast, my soul hates it. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. That's what I told you. God is, God is powerless to commit sin. He's powerless to look at sin. <laughs> you see, God has power to do all things, but not when it comes to sin. He, he look. He said, you people have destroyed my altar. Okay, I will build my altar in your hearts. I will put my altar in your body. Let me now know how you can now go and kill something in your body. 
Mm. Let me now know how you pollute it. So my altar, your body is now my altar. Your heart is my temple. So devil now decided to change it. Devil now said, how can I pollute it all? Oh, oh, okay. He convert gold to earrings. And then he quickly, he quickly put it. He said, they, once they wear it, since it has been polluted, since it has been given to us in Ezekiel chapter 9, Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19, 20, 21, since it has been given to us to pollute. So once they wear it, it will pollute the temple of God. Yes, which is now on their body. Yes, we will pollute it. So devil produce all those things. Some people nowadays, they even wear chain on their leg. They are not prisoners, so, but they wear chain on their leg. I thought they say it's their husband that put it there. Hello, is it their husband? They, they wear chain on their leg. Like prisoners. I call them prisoners. We they wear chain. Bias. He said? Witchcraft attires. <laughs> no, I was not saying witchcraft attire. They they put they put uh, they, they they put chain on their leg instead of them to even put longer one to become home dog. So they we know that they are home dogs. Then they put chain there. They say, oh, it's their husband that put it there. The man that want to marry and they are working with chain. And those chains are costly. They wear it. You see. I pity them if, if the arm robber, if the thief cut off their leg and collect the chain because it will take them time to be losing it. So I don't mind. So that is it. You see, you see them. Do, 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 do you imagine? They pollute the body. They pollute the body with the earrings, with the makeup, with the worldly materials. So devil find another way to pollute it. And that is how he polluted it. He polluted the first, he polluted the last temple, which is our body. After they have you have encouraged them to pollute the last one. But let's now go to the punishment before we pray now. Punishment for those that copy the world. Punishment for those that destroy the temple of God. I want you to open your mouth and pray now before we look at this. That Father, don't allow me to be enticed by the world to destroy your temple in my, in my body. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's open our mouth and pray that, Father, don't allow me to destroy the temple that you have created in me. Everything that I've used to destroy it in the past, Father, have mercy on me. Forgive me and redeem me today. Open your mouth and pray. Yes, my Father. I don't think the entire of the things of the world for me to destroy the temple of the Lord. Jesus, do not allow me to go to destroy the temple of God in my life. Do not allow the world to entice me today. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let me let me go by myself before God. Let me give me the grace of God to compare the entire things of the world in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, sorry, are we angry at the topic? That's why we are not responding. Are we angry? No. It's an offensive, it's an, uh, it's an offensive teaching because it looks judgmental. That's how people put it, judgmental. But in case if you don't know that you are destroying the temple of God, listen, you know, First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Can anybody, can somebody quickly go there? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Can somebody read it, please? First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. It's not my Bible. I don't want you to come out from my Bible. First Corinthians I want you to come out. 17 says, I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It says, if any man defy the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if any man destroy the temple, him will God destroy. If any man put a ring on that temple, that God forbid that even the wife of Jacob cannot carry to appear before God. That God said, remove it so that I will know what I will do to you. If any man not carry that thing and put on the body, which is the temple, if any man carry the trouser, 
that wear it as a woman, that God say a man shall not wear that thing that belongs to a woman, and said that, oh, this one is for women. If any man, if any man should pierce the ear, that God said no evil woman should pierce, and a woman, a man now pierces it. If anyone should wear miniskirt and expose the temple, so that the temple is now polluted by the men looking at it and committing sin in their heart. If any man do that, him, she, her, with God destroy. You that do it will God destroy, except you repent today. If any man paint something, put any other color on that lips that God has not put when they burn you, him shall God destroy. Every person that make up on this world, every person that is not natural, that is dressing like the people of the world, is the daughter of Jezebel. Believe it or not, whether you are a, you are a leader in the church, you are a daughter of Jezebel, your mother, your grandmother is Jezebel. Yes, it's Jezebel. Your grandfather is Ahab, and your grandmother is Jezebel. If you find yourself that one of those things is in your body, your grandmother, your mother, that begot thee is Jezebel, because it's the one who first practiced it to seduce man. May God deliver us in the mighty name of Jesus. Punishment for those that copy the word to destroy the temple of God. Isaiah chapter, this is where everything ends. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. Let's start. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. If you are there, you can read verse 16. The book of Isaiah chapter 3. This place we are going to read before we pray. Isaiah 3, 16. Isaiah 3, 16. We should be rounding up by 5.30. Isaiah 3, 16. Isaiah 3, 16. He said, yes. Okay, man. Moreover, the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, and one with such false necks, and one to <coughs> talking and missing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet. Praise the Lord. Because Amen. my people, because CHMI members, and time, STN, because some among you, some among you, are walking with stretched foot neck like ostrich. Ostrich. You know, there is one bird that have long neck. You see them. You see some people, they want to enter church like this. They are walking. They come, they came later. Satan will reserve one chair in the front for them. They now begin to tread. They begin to mice their feet. You see them. They do peck them. They are coming. They are walking. And they are, they are, they are, they are, they are shaking a stupid buttock to, to show the world that oh let me have entered and people begin to calculate the kind of clothes they wear please let's meet our mic let's meet our mic please you see them they begin to do what they begin to walk with thinking of their feet you see god said oh because they are doing this wanting eyes is it is only in the world of today I, oh, God bless you. Like Toro Tolo, God bless you. They walk like Toro Tolo of a truth. They walk like Toro Tolo. Yes. Toro Tolo. That is talking. Mm, that's how they walk. Now, look at verse 16. He said, with wanting eyes. It's only in the church today that I see that people eat chewing gum. They chewing gum in the church like prostitutes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All their brain is inside that chewing gum. They chew their brain together with the chewing gum. And you see them, they are there, you know, they are, if you ask them, what is the topic in today, church? They say, mm, <laughs> the topic, the topic is that pastor teach something. Yes, because they have chewed their brain together with the chingum in the church. Now, he said, with wanting eyes, and they mice as they go, they drag their feet on the ground as they are walking, and they said they are daughter of Zion. What kind of daughter are you? You are a bastard of God. You are, God is not your father. Ahab is your father. Jezebel is your mother. That is what you are. You are not a son of God. You are not a daughter of God. If you're a daughter of God, you will abide with the word of God that said, be natural. That is what it is. 
We will abide with the word of God. Thank God you have come out of the world. You have loved this group. You have joined us. You are you are part of us now. Even we that have been here, what are we doing at the back? If you have found one thing, look at what he said in verse 17. He said, therefore the Lord will smith with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And the Lord will discover their secret part. What, what do you mean of that? What have they done that God wants to discover them? What did they do? What did they do that God wants to discover them? Look at what they did. Look at what they did. Look at what they did in verse 17. He said, therefore, he said, what we discover their secret part. In verse 18, he said, in that day, the Lord, please let's meet our mic. God bless you. Let the host meet me now. In that day, the Lord will take away the bravery of their tinkling ornament about their feet. This is it. That ring they put on their legs. About their feet. And their cows and their round ties like the moon. In verse 90, said the chains. Today, I see people in the church with chains. Chains. They wear chains. Pair that. They refuse that Jesus should not come down from cross. They put they put Jesus on the cross. They carry Jesus on the cross. Jesus have come down from cross two thousand years ago. They still hang him on the cross and carry him all about. Uh -uh. What kind of wickedness are you? We are reading Isaiah chapter three verse nineteen now. Isaiah chapter three verse nineteen. The chains and the the bracelet and the mufflers. Verse twenty now. He said, the bonnet and the ornament of the legs and the headband and the tablet and the earrings. Hallelujah. Look at it. And the earrings. God will discover it. God will punish everyone. Who all those sin is on their body and rapture happened, you did not go. You will face the consequences because God will read this place for you that day according to his words. And we show you a lesson you can never forget. He will deal with you if you find. You say, he that destroyed the temple with all this, shall God destroy, with God destroy. He said with hearing, in verse 21, in verse 21, can somebody read verse 21? I want all of us to look at it. Verse 21, Isaiah chapter 3, verse 21. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 21. Who can read that verse 20? 21? I read. Yes, yes, God bless you, yes. The rings and nose jewels. <laughs> the rings and nose jewels. You see, some people, they pierce their nose. We should put hook on your nose to control you. Mm. Even monkeys, monkeys, they mm. can't open their ear to control them like that. Mm. Even horse, horse is better than some people. Horse, because we brood in their mouth, horse. But human beings today, we pierce and pierce. What remains now is that some people should pierce their manhood. They should pierce their eyes, pierce their head. Pierce your neck. I'm pleading with God for something. I know. I say, God, please, in the last day, forgive everyone that have tattoo on their body, especially those that even refuse that uh, you, you are not, they that not accept you. But do them a favor. Any part where they draw the tattoo, cut it off and throw it to hell and let the body that remains come and meet you in heaven. And I realize that some people, their head will enter hell. Because some people, they draw a tattoo on their head. They don't cut up their head and throw it inside hair fire. <laughs> yes, they will cut the head. Some people will not enter heaven with hand because they will cut the hand. Some people even went ahead to draw a tattoo on their stomach. The, in <laughs> fact, some people, I, some people, all their body is designed. <laughs> some people are copying this musician they call Lin Wing. Even Lin Wing, when you look at him, he draw a tattoo to the extent that he now draw one on his cheek eyes. He draw it like tears. He said, this is my tears. I will cry when I enter hell. He knew he was going to hell. But when I look at our tout here in Nigeria, they draw it like Lewin. They draw tears on their cheek. Ah, what an ignorant source. What an ignorant source. Look at what he said in verse 22. The changeable suit of apparel. Look at it now. We come again. The changeable suit of apparel. Those costly suits you wear to entice men, to entice women. Some men, they go and borrow money, go under loan to buy clothes. And they will come and be knocking at your door. You'll be lying. You say they, they should tell them that you travel. And the crypt, the crypt pins, all the pins you put on your body, on your nose, on your ear, on your mouth, everywhere. 
God said he will deal with you. He said, the glass and the fine linen and the hood and the veil. And in verse 24, which is the last verse he said, can somebody read that verse 24? Verse 24 I read. And it, and it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. And instead of a gaddle, a rain. And instead of a well-said hair, boldness. And instead of a stomacher, a garden of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Ha! May this never be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. May this never be my portion and my family and you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God said, on the last day, when he will judge the earth, when he will judge everyone that have put on this thing, he said, it shall come to pass that instead of sweet smell, that is not that we use perf. Perf is for dead bodies. Hey, people will say, ah, ah, pastor have come. What is this one again? Say so we should not even use perf again. <laughs> hey, he said, instead of sweet smell, hmm, a stink. Instead of griddle, a rent. <laughs> instead of well-set hair, yeah, he said what? He said that what's the boldness? He said of don't put in attachment. That day God will wipe it because once, once you enter hell, fire will burn all the hair and you remain score. Instead of stomata, a grid of sackcloth and burning instead of what? Beauty. <laughs> because all this thing we are doing it because we want to be beautiful. But God said, instead of that, it will be burning. Beauty will be no more. Beauty will be no more. Painting is a sin. Jeremiah chapter 30, chapter 4, 30, chapter 4 verse 30. We all know that already. We all know that. I pray for you. I want you to bow down your head and pray now. That Lord, I've heard the word. I've realized that so many things you are against it. Father, have mercy on me. The reason why you need to pray this prayer because I'm not sure it's the same heaven that Mary, the mother of Jesus, enter. We want to enter. I'm not sure it's the same heaven that Dorcas enter. We want to enter. I'm not sure it's the same heaven that Paul enter with all the strive to enter. <laughs> strive to enter for many with try, but they will not enter. I'm not sure it's the same heaven that Jesus said the kingdom of God suffered violent and violent take it by force. If what does it mean by violent taking by force? You must accept to be fooled to enter there. You are going to open your mouth and pray, Father, help me to keep away from all those things you hate. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray. Let's open our mouth and pray. You don't marry all these things. You marry Jesus. I'm married to Jesus. Say that to me alone. Leave me alone. Say that to me alone. And God of mercy, I surrender all. I surrender all. God of course, you are created with any of this. That God of mercy, I want to forget you. I want to survive. I want to survive. We are not going to come to God with all any kind of jewelry. We are not going to come to God any 
have to find what to do. I want to be loose from the yoke of bondage. Only you can free us. The Bible says, when you hear his voice, have it not your heart. He said, Jesus, my sinner, we pray. And God free us from the shackles of the enemy. In Jesus, my sinner, we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, it's like somebody wants to enter. Please let the panelists check. Let the panelists check uh, the outside to know who is at the door to let them in. Praise the Lord. Okay. God bless you. Now, we have come to the conclusion of the matter. It's too wide. We shall be talking about the rest later. May God help us mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's any question, please, I pass over to the moderator. The moderator take over so that we can attend to other things. God bless you. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my brother, for that wonderful sermon. Women of substance, women of excellence, that's what we are when we have given our life to Christ. I want us to just wail before the Lord. Men of honor, I want us to wail before the Lord before we now pray for uh, the servant of God, God have used. Let's pray in the world at the hand of the living God. We open our eyes. The Bible says, we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Let us call upon God. Bible has given us that option that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. God supervised us when he created us and he looked at us and he said we are beautifully. He rested on the seventh day because we are made beautiful. You can't look at your daughter or your son and say it's ugly because there was no make, there's no makeup in children and yet they are beautiful. When you look at your baby photograph, when you look at when you're growing up, there's no makeup and you're still pretty. You're looking good and you still show people this is when I was a child. What has happened to us? Let's call upon God, Father, Lord. Free me from the yoke of deception. Let us pray. And God Almighty, deliver us from the marine spirit that has held us in captivity. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Ah, the devil has swore against women that he will bruise their head. So God Almighty, any area the devil has bruised through the court, through any channel. Father, I'm free. Let us pray. Open your mic and pray. It's a time to pray. Ah, let's not cherry pick the word of God. In the name of Jesus. In that it's hard not for the Lord. That is not I pray, Lord, remember me. The spirit of God, the spirit of the spirit of God, the I surrender all. 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 I surrender
person and will never grow. Are you going to mock about with this calling, this intimacy, this beckoning? And you're going to say to God, if you're among those ones, I want you to just signify with your hand that, Father, I want complete obedience. Because when you have complete obedience, you will have complete blessing. He said, I will give you according to the measure of your faith. What you sow, you will reap. You can't sow half of a leaf and you want blessing. You're going to say today, God, I sorry now. I, it is no longer me that lives, but Christ that lives in me. In me, because if you fail to recognize and acknowledge it, you're gonna the enemy, the, you know, all those things, they all have demonic attachment. They're gonna wait for you. There are no ways to help. They're going to where you're going to say, Hey, but when you come up to me and say, Father, I need your grace because you are number one in my life. I'm ready to surrender. Anyone that is ready to surrender and say, Father, I no longer, this is all idolatry of our time. The God of gold, the God of makeup, the God of gold and makeup, the God of various kind of skimpy wear, the God of showing the body, worshiping of the body. And you say today, Father, I want to be a genuine child of God. Before I get out of my, my closet, I want to supervise like a, a, a woman of honor, a child of honor, a, a man of honor, a man of substance. I want to look before I anything because heaven is looking at me. If God says my eye is always upon the righteous every day in their life, to some if you are going to call God in the closet in the first and, and then outside the meeting, you look like a devil, you dress like a devil, you look like a devil. My recommend you dress it up the book. I need to live in my life. I don't live in my life. I saw it at all. I told her that the world we know so much death is. Give me the grace. Give me the grace. Father, I invite you. Deliver me from every hardness of heart, every language of Satan, every outburst of men. Ah, God, I pray that Lord, I pray that you come and I bless you with the grace of God. Not the will of grace. In the name of Jesus. Deliver me. Show what I brought you. Have more of your ways. That God Almighty, I will not listen to the persecution. I am sorry now. Your grace is sufficient. If others have made it, I can make it. If there are people in this planet who have given up all for Jesus, God, I am ready. God, I am ready to give up. Because I don't want time to be too late in my soul. I can do it in You can only surrender to me. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. We are going to, um, in Jesus' name, we pray. We are going to pray for us, uh, our pastor that led us today that the Lord Almighty will show her, show her, show her him abundantly with divine wisdom, blessing of God, visitation. You know that God, while others are there looking for pornography and seduction, the man of God is here wailing and crying for mercy to reach us. May the Almighty God restore upon him the wisdom. May God water him in the name of Jesus. As he has given us, they you know, quench our thirst. Some people are thirsty of truth. I don't know whether this is right. I don't know whether this is right. Oh, my pastor's wife is here. My pastor's, they, they, who told you that so all the people were, some people say, oh, how can they know the word of God? Have you seen the book of life? You saw their name there? That God Almighty, I call upon your name. Some of the way your the pastors you bow to and the ministers, whether female or male, some of the way they dress and kind of the heavy demonic ring that they wear. I'm telling you, some of them, if you take photograph and put it in the midst of unsaved people, they will never say this is a child of God. Mm. The unsaved will tell you, these people are not Christians. But we become adamant, stiff necked because applause, they pet you, they give you house rent. They, you know, I pray that you will not look for house rent and go to hell. It, mm -hmm. ah, after all, the beggar suffered as he made it. I pray God will not allow you to lose heaven because of friendship 
and the, 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 the bread and butter that come from the territory of demons. That God Almighty will help us. Religious spirits. Religious spirits. God deliver us from religious spirit. God deliver us from the religious spirit. God, Jesus did not die for religion. Jesus died for righteousness. But you will know him and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship is the angel fellowshipping with you. And do they attend to you? Or you drive them away with perverse looks and perverse ways of behavior. Because when you look it, you will act it. They say, if you look it, you act it. We wear trousers. Some of the way you can't climb, you will just put your legs everywhere. But when you wear garments of modesty, you will walk it, you will act it. May God deliver us completely in Jesus' name. Mm. Father God, I pray, bestow your power and mercy upon your son. And Father, mm. what is done for us today, may you, oh God, enrich him in okay. Jesus' name. Every power mm. that, oh God, you, you, you have utilized, oh God, Father, and he has, oh God, deposited towards us. Because of the truth revealed today, Father, replenish abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. Your Majesty. Jesus' name. Amen. Please, there's an announcement today. I wouldn't want to forget it. And the announcement is uh, tomorrow after prayer, uh, Pastor Jeff would like to see all the men. Men in the house. We have seen some men of God that the Lord is uh, really drawing intimately. Oh, the, the man of God wants to see you, the servant of God wants to see you, so that um, whatever God has put in his mind, let you know, he will deliberate on it tomorrow, just the man. Well, um, I'm sure um, our sisters tomorrow, maybe even if he means us, well, I don't know how we're going to handle it, but we might be brief or to give them chance. So we see how it happens, whether we're going to use another Zoom number or something. So. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we share the grace of the Lord? The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The love of God the Father. Surely, our Lord, goodness and mercy shall follow us. Let us of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Just a few seconds silent to meditate on what you have heard today and to plead the Lord that nothing will take away what God has revealed to you and granted you today, Jesus. Amen. Uh, excuse me, sister, a uh, pastor. I just I want Come to on, everybody. When we are in that um when we are meditating for our new sister, we don't we just stay quiet before the presence of God so we can reflect into what we have had and after that we can answer. God bless you. I know some of us don't know. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Okay, my sisters. Amen. Yes, sister, somebody was talking to me. God bless you. Yes, I was asking I has the dream I just wanted to ask.